Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our series that is Software Testing Bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamentals of testing concepts. We are in chapter 3 where we are heading towards understanding on the test types and the test levels. So far we have discussed a lot of things about functional testing and we are continuing ahead with 3.2 non-functional test levels and as a part of this particular segment we started with the very first non-functional level which is performance testing and uh, we covered a part one on it now it's time for us to continue ahead and look forward to the remaining sub levels of performance testing continuing ahead on this particular discussion is the next one volume testing so volume testing is more about what exactly we need to do with the set of users again just quickly recalling when you talk about performance testing it is to measure the stability response time transition throughput at varying number of concurrent users and of course when you talk about the concurrent users you're looking forward to understand that what happens if all the users try to log in into the system at the same time now it's really really difficult to say at any point of time what happens if 1000 people try to hit the login button at the same fraction of second? Sometimes the application sustains the load, sometimes the system can crash. Now that's pretty much dependent on the way the application is built, designed, architectured, etc. And there are many other things which happens that can a program be executed simultaneously to handle that huge load? So we need to groom the application according to the need. Now volume testing is all about when a huge amount of users try to perform an action at the same time or a particular component, particular functionality is being executed by a lot of users at the same time. That is simultaneous. Now this is where the concurrent users comes into picture. Now this number is not fixed that we are talking about 1000 users at a time. No, it depends on the type of application. If you're talking about e-commerce websites who run kind of like a Black Friday or kind of a big billion day event where they expect 1 billion users to be live on their application within the same day or sometime even simultaneously. So we just want to make sure that the system stays strong and does not respond slow when all these people are available. Now this is where it has to be tested and made sure that if it happens, it does not crash. On the other hand, if I'm talking about the huge number of users, but what if they don't do it simultaneously? There could be an alternative to that where users can be using it back to back, but not together for a continuous period of time. That means two users logging in every 10 seconds, but the users who logged in are not logging out. They're still in the room, right? They're still in the scenario and Every 10 seconds, there is a addition or ramp up of number of users. Now, consistent load is the concept here when we talk about endurance testing. Endurance is slow increase in the weight, right? Endurance, which is for a continuous period of time. Just for an example, if I'm an interviewer and I've been asked to take the interview entire day, I might be showing a great energy level right at the beginning of the day and asking great questions to the candidates when we start the day. But continuously every 30 minutes if I'm taking back to back interviews, by the time I reach evening around five or six o'clock, I am exhausted. Or I may just say that, oh come on, now no more interviews. I may not be able to take any more candidates for today. Let's do it tomorrow. Why? Because I have been taking multiple users, but not at a time. But of course, for continuous period of time, if I ask you to do few sit-ups right now, you would not mind doing 10 or 20 as well without any kind of problem. But if I suddenly ask you to go ahead and okay, fine, go ahead and do 100 sit-ups, you may cry. Now that's what is endurance when huge amount of load is applied, but in intervals for continuous period of time. What happens to the system? Maybe after 20 hours of continuous load, right? You may say that application became slow, like responding very slowly on the request what you may have. On the other hand, there's an optional level here called a spike testing. And the spike testing is exclusively done in the applications where you expect a sudden increment in the number of users at particular interval of time. For example, if you have any specific occasion or a specific time when you say that exactly at the 6 a.m. in the morning, 
you will have great offers coming up on our platform. Now, no matter how many people are online around the day, exactly at 6 a.m., you may expect an increase in the number of users. And you also declared that you will have limited count of items available to claim for very, very less cost. Then, of course, the load will remain for hardly maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and after 30 minutes, again, the load vanishes. Now, this sudden increment and decrement on the number of users for a while is creating a spike on your graph, right? You know what exactly spike looks like. It's a conical structure, which is certainly poking you up, right? So this conical structure is what we call it a spike. And this conical spike in your graph, which is certain increment and drop in the ordinary graph is what you call it as spike testing. Now, if any application has to expect such kind of behaviors too, we perform SPAC testing there as well. But it's not necessary that all the applications will need spike testing, but it is certainly important if an application has the need or they have anticipations that are we will be rolling out some offers at a particular point of time during the day, then you anticipate a sudden increment and sudden drop, which is pretty much the same. For example, you have been lifting uh, 10 kgs every day when you go to the gym, which is your regular exercise. But all of a sudden, if you try to pick up 50 kg today, maybe you may fracture your bone or maybe have some kind of uh, kind of strain in your back because you just tried doing something spike, which is not regular to you. So applying similar concept back to your application as well. An application can certainly experience any kind of sprain there, and that sprain is not so beneficial for our application too. Sometimes it can crash, sometimes the response times become pretty slow, and suddenly due to the incremented number of users, and we don't want that to happen, right? We are talking about quality characteristics when we say non-functional testing, and we wanna make sure that when users are working on our application, we are giving them the optimum, the best of the services what we have. So this is what altogether is we call as performance testing, and it has five sub-levels which are conducted for every single application. Spike being an optional, if your application invites a certain increment, then you perform it, otherwise it remains optional. But load testing, stress testing, volume testing, endurance testing are the common sub-levels under performance to perform it, right? I hope that gives you a clear picture of what exactly performance testing is altogether all about. We will be looking forward to talk about some more non-functional tests upcoming in our tutorials. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.